Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to look at how to put a text or any object into perspective and track it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. All right, so we have our footage here. Let's take it directly to the Fusion page. And the first thing we're going to do is to generate the tracking data. And to do that, we're going to take advantage of the planner tracker node. So let's just uh, plug that right after media in one. Now, one of the coolest things about a planner tracker is that it can track the perspective changes of surfaces present in our video. Now with the settings set to pretty much just their default, what we're going to do first is to draw out the surface that uh, we are going to track. This is going to be the surface where we will be slapping our text onto. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should just to give the system an idea uh, what the surface is going to be like. So now with that completed, uh, with our playhead positioned at the zero frame, we're now ready to track forward. Uh, and also if let's say you want to start tracking somewhere else in this video, the only thing you will have to do is to hit the set button first before you start tracking. Okay, so now with our tracking completed, we have the tracking data that we need uh, to move on to the next step. So in order to get our text onto the wall, the first thing we will do is to change the operation mode from track to corner pin. So now you will see this corner pin box show up in our video. And this corner pin is basically going to be where our text is going to show up. And also one thing to note here is that how you position this corner pin is going to affect the perspective of the text. So uh, let's go ahead and position in a way that's lined up with the perspective of the wall and now let's bring a text node and let's just write our text here. And once that is done, let's just plug this text node back uh, to Planner Tracker. And what you will see now is that our text is not only sitting within our corner pin uh, box there, but also it's lined up in the right perspective, in the same perspective as the wall. And if we were to replay this right now, you guys will see that uh, our text is also moving in perfect sync with the motion of the background. Now at this point, we've gone over a fairly straightforward scenario, but what if you want the same text to cross over to the other side of the wall? To do that, we are going to go to corner pin count and hit the plus sign. So this will, as you can see, add another corner pin box to our video. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is to manually adjust the top uh, left as well as the bottom left corner pins. But for the top right and the bottom right corner pins, we're actually going to borrow the data from the top left and the bottom left corner pins from corner pin one. So what we will do here is to copy the top left and the bottom left corner pin data from corner pin one and then paste it over to the uh, top right and bottom right corner pins. Now you can also use expression here, guys, but I'm just going to use uh, copy and paste uh, for now. And so once that is done, you will see that these four corner pins will perfectly overlap uh, one another. Okay, now uh, once that is done, one thing you will also notice is that if we were to move this text over to the left, uh, the text will just get cut off at the end of the corner pin one. So that's not gonna work. So one thing we'll have to do here is to plug our text node uh, to planner tracker again. So now the same text is going to show up in corner pin two as well. The next thing we're going to do is to bring in a transform node and we're going to place it after text one for the first corner pin for now. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up the size a little bit there. And then we're going to move this text over to the left uh, to the point where you feel like it's a good cutoff for this text. And then the next thing we're going to do is to copy and paste this transform node. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to connect our text one uh, node uh, to this new transform node. And then we're going to connect this transform node back to our planner tracker node. And just in case you're not sure, uh, you can always hover over the input and it's going to tell you uh, which one is corner pin one and which one is corner pin two. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to come to this new transform node and then we're going to simply add one to the center X uh, position. And now that, as you can see, is going to move uh, this other text uh, over to the right so that they look like it's one text. 
Okay, so if we were to play this back right now, you guys will see that uh, not only uh, are they are the texts moving in sync with the motion of the background, uh, but also the perspective is correct as well. Now, in addition to the two scenarios we looked at, another scenario that we may run into is to have the same letters of the text cross both sides of the wall. So if we were to come to the first transform node and move this text over to the right just a little bit, you can see that now we only see a one half of the letter E and the letter N. So uh, what we need to do right now is to copy the X value of the center parameter and then go to the new transform node and then paste this value in the X value of the center parameter here. And then we also need to add one. So now you will see that this text is uh, very much aligned with the new one. Uh, we may also need to move the, uh, change the Y parameter there, just move it down a little bit. Uh, so now I think both texts are perfectly lined up with one another. Another thing you will also notice here is that we also seem to have a gap uh, in between these two texts. Uh, so that's really odd. And uh, especially considering that these two corner pins perfectly overlap each other at this point. So that is something that we'll have to fix. So in order to fix this, we are going to bring a background node and then we're going to turn the alpha value all the way down to zero. We're also going to bring a paint node and then let's connect the background node uh, to this paint node. Then let's come to the planner tracker node and then we're going to change the operation mode from corner pin uh, back to track. And then we are going to select create planner transform. We're going to click that. So this will export all the tracking data as a separate node. And uh, let's also not to forget to change the operation mode from track to corner pin. And then uh, let's connect the pin node uh, to planner transform node. And then we're going to connect this planner transform node uh, back to planner tracker as a uh, foreground. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is to go to paint and then we're going to select uh, stroke as the brush type. And then we're going to make sure that the color also matches the color of the text. And then now let's come to brush controls and then we're going to play with the setting here. So we're going to bring the softness all the way down. And then we're also going to bring the size uh, down quite a bit there too, because we don't need a big brush uh, because what we're trying to do here guys is to paint over this gap. And uh, once all this is done, guys, uh, we are going to play this back. And then one thing you will notice is that when we play this back, you will see that everything that we did here uh, in this step is going to move in sync with the rest of the text. And the reason that was the case is because we exported the tracking data and we make sure that our paint node was connected to this planner transform node. All right, so let's take our effect back to the edit page, let it render, and yeah, guys, at this point, we are pretty much done. Uh, the one last thing we can do to take this up one more notch is to create a mask around uh, our young lady here. So to do that, we're going to copy this clip and then we're going to paste it, and then we're going to right-click this clip and in the menu, select Reset Fusion Composition. This will just basically get rid of all the fusion work that we just did. Uh, so now we're left basically with just the raw clip. Okay, so let's take this clip uh, to uh, the color page and then we're going to uh, right click uh, in the panel there up top, right click and then in the menu select add alpha output. So this will add a alpha output node and then we're going to connect that square, uh, the blue square to this alpha output. And then uh, let's come to uh, our secondary window and then we're going to select curve window. You can use whichever one uh, that you want, but I'm going to go with the curve window. And basically we're just going to uh, isolate to create a shape around uh, our main subject here uh, to isolate her. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, once that is done, and then we're going to uh, also make sure that we track it. Uh, so let's come to the tracker and then let's track it from the beginning all the way to the end so that we capture the motion as well. And uh, once that is done, let's just take this uh, back to the edit page. And then we're going to bring this clip on top of the other one. And uh, yeah, guys, at this point, this is it. So we basically created a mask around our main subject so that she is now going to uh, kind of stand out from the rest of the text. 
So this is it guys uh, for this tutorial. Uh, I hope it helps. It's a lot of information, but uh, as always, I uh, will see you next time. I wish I knew